Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 65 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just doing a little research, something uh, pretty nifty called Kinetic Attraction. What's this all about? Hmm, well it's a Thomic Tinkerer research from Thomic Tinkerer. And uh, you can manage to make these nifty little gadgets. They're really cool. Uh, let's take a look at what we can do with them. So I'm going to want not the Kinetic Attractor, I want the Corporeal Attractor. So I'm going to need a little bit of copper, earth, air... Wand focus, telekinesis, and some great wood logs. All right, telekinesis, wand focus, what's involved in that? Well, let's see. I need to get my wand focus of telekinesis set up too, huh? Well, here we go. Oh, cool. That was one of those you can just click on to get it. Awesome. Uh, so what's involved in making that? Oh, that's an arcane infusion. All right, so I'm going to need some nether quartz, an ender pearl, gold, iron, and air shard. All right, cool. Gold. And you know me, I like to grab a few extras. Iron air shard and some quartz I'll just grab a bunch of that and then finally hey I've got a lot of ender pearls so I will take that for sure 90 of them wow I must be getting a lot down here huh cool so uh, as you can see my system is cruising uh, I might even move my ender pearls that are up in my main system down to here but for now long story short we've got a good thing going um, I haven't moved these guys out just yet but that's okay oh good I got another miniature red heart I've been wanting to collect these as much as I can even getting a few trophies which are neat I'll show you guys how to play with those in a little bit but miniature red hearts definitely important so remember last episode I was trying to get the fan working here and uh, basically I found that these two fans do push towards the center of the room but because these five are blowing so hard it's it's just becoming a hassle and I would just like to try something new anyway so we're gonna try the corporeal attractors which might work even better than what we've already got going on so I'm gonna try this out what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and make my infusion here and I'll probably just do this off camera because this usually just takes a little while um, even though it's you know one of my favorites to do but I think you guys have seen enough infusion crafting for one lifetime and let's see so let's go here I've got and then four of those okay cool I can manage one two so I'm gonna go make sure I've got all the stuff I need in the jars here one of these days I'll automate these jars um, but for now I'm just being lazy and doing it manually how backwards does that sound I know all right let me get this going I'll be back when I'm ready all right looking pretty good here I think we've got a completed process I did lose an air shard that's okay but we do have a little bit of flux so maybe we should clean this up dun 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 and clean up, please. Thank you. Oh, that is cool. All right. Hey, look at me. I've got a one focus telekinesis. This is cool stuff. Uh, so if we take a look in our Thalmanomicon, we'll see what this does. Uh, I'm going to be using this in a crafting recipe in a moment, so I don't think I get to keep it. Um, I'm guessing it gets used up in the crafting recipe, but we'll find out. Uh, hey, can actually moves objects laying on the floor. Nice. So uh, pretty much, it's actually really a cool wand focus. Check this out. I'm going to just throw some cobble around there and pick it up and watch this. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, that's neat. Like, I like that. That's kind of cool. I mean, we should play catch with this. Me and me and Soren maybe on our single player, or on a multiplayer series. But yeah, that's cool stuff. Um, but I don't think there's much else you can do with it. It's neat, but it's not. Oh yeah, there you go. Shift right click to pull it towards you. That's cool. I like that. Very nice one focus. Unfortunately, we're about to use it up. So let's go get the stuff we need for the next piece of this. Uh, we're going to go put this back on so we can travel back and forth to our base quickly. Ooh, it's nighttime. So what's involved in getting the corporeal attractor? So there's two types of attractors, uh, corporeal and uh, kinetic. Kinetic moves items, corporeal moves entities. So we need two copper, earth, air, and great wood logs. Okay, so two copper... Just need an air shard. While I'm here, I'll put this, this, and this away, and then just some great wood logs, two of them. Cool, that should be doable without much problem. And then out of here, I just need to snag my wand focus, because as you guys know, uh, that's part of that. Man, I really hope this doesn't get used up. That would be nice, but we'll see. These guys, something like this, two cop. Hey, there we go. Corporeal attractor. That's what we want. Yoink. Okay, so yeah, it does use that up. So corporeal attractor attracts entities, and it's pretty much based on the strength of the redstone signal you give it. So if you give it like a full strength redstone signal, it'll pull from really far away. I think a max of 
seven and a half blocks? Is that what the thing in here says? It does tell you in the entry here. Uh, yeah, the range of attraction depends on the redstone signal applied to it. Um, a lever next to it will allow for 7.5 blocks, and the further away the redstone signal, or the weaker the redstone signal is, um, the less the attraction will be. So, let's demonstrate with a sheep. Ha! <laughs> cool. Plus it looks neat when it's on. Sucking guys in. I like it. Um, and like I said, Kinetic would attract items in much the same way a vacuum hopper does, but a longer range, which is nice. Uh, so nuts to fans. You guys are out of here because you are not doing what I need you to do today. So fans off. Cool. All right. So let me get rid of these. They do actually take a minute to break. I think I'm just going to relocate the way these things are all set up. And I'm just going to pretty much uh, put my corporeal attractor right now there. See how much less damage it does when I actually have armor on? <laughs> Alright, uh, give me a minute guys, I will be back uh, once I move everything around here. Um, and we'll get this set up. One more thing I should note about this block is you can actually create what's called a soul mold. And you can specify what type of mobs to pull towards it. And you can also specify, I think it's something like, I have to right click it with the wand here. Oh, look at that, that got in there. I don't want that in there. So we're pulling all mobs in and you can specify whether only adults or children should be pulled if you want, um, not necessary. So what happened was uh, this thing was actually, um, this is an inventory. I guess you can pipe items into it. That's cool. Oh, and uh, right click to change from pulling or pushing mode. So if you want to push mobs away or pull mobs in. So we definitely want it in pull mode. And I guess what we're going to want to do is get in here with it. And we're going to have to check if this will work. So I want this to be orange mode. And then we know the wiring game. This looks a little cleaner too. I think this will work in a little bit better in the end. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Can't wait to try this out and see if it works. We're going to find out if this thing works like through the block or if it needs a direct signal, in which case I'll have to do the, the redstone wire bit. But I'm going to avoid it if I don't have to. Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? We'll know it's working because we'll see like the little particle effects going on. So with that, it does not appear to be working. So we can fix that by doing something as simple as this. Okay, you and you and then you. and then wire it back up, and then we should be good. There we go. So now you're running. Yeah, look at that, there we go. We got little blue lightning things coming out of it, cool. All right, let me just clean this room up a little bit, like so, and there, and then finally, nice. I like it. All right, that should look pretty good. All right, so should we test this out and see how well it works? Yeah, we definitely should. All right, so this should turn on and off the attractor. So see, it's not blue lightning. Let's turn it on. It does have blue lightning pulses. Let's flip on the spawner and see how well that works. And if it will attract them directly into there. So what we should get is, I'm gonna stand inside the glass here so I can see a little better. Come on, Mother Skeletons. Oh, that's perfect. Look at it. It's working great. It sucks them right into that spot, and then they get killed. How cool is that, huh? Except, yeah, okay. There we go. Sometimes I guess it takes a second before it kills it. But hey, it's working. I'm good. If it works, I'm good. By the way, we could use the vacuum hopper to suck up those experience orbs, but I think we have enough liquid experience, don't you guys? Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Um, is there anything on I want to clean up this dirt and cobble doesn't need to be in here. Otherwise, I think we're in pretty good shape. Look, we're getting all kinds of good stuff here. All right, five wither skeleton skulls. Nice. So where are we going to set up the wither skeleton spawner? That's the first question, I guess. Do we want to set it up down here, or do we want to do it elsewhere? I don't really know. I'm not sure. I guess I should clean up this mess. Uh, 
I'll put these here. All right, guys, I'll be back in a minute when I'm ready to uh, move on to the next stage of building this little cool setup we got going on. And after all, there's really no need for anything here because I can just walk into this room and absorb tons and tons of experience, which is kind of fun. La 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 la. You can't get to me, skeletons. <laughs> that is fun. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Seriously, back to building now. All right, guys, what do you think of this as a nice room to pretty much set up for the weather killing? Now, I was going to use my inverted white lamp to light this room up, but I quickly discovered that it's a tile entity, which means I can't protect it. Don't worry, I found another solution. Glowstone is not a tile entity and therefore can be protected. Unfortunately, once you protect it, it kind of changes the block's properties and removes the lighting source. So I'm going to have to try and find something that I can ward and uh, go ahead and actually still have light from. So while we can't ward the uh, light itself, uh, even though it's going to just be a little derpy in my inventory there, there we go, light, uh, we can ward uh, some clear glass, so let's do it. Uh, so we can put the clear glass here and ward that. Oh, are you really going to block light traveling through? No way. So you're destroying the glass properties too. Alright, let me just get normal glass and see if that also gets blocked. Normal glass pane? Not like the most important thing in the world to have light here, but huh, that's funny. It does get blocked. Interesting. All right, you guys, know what? I'm not going to worry about it right now. We'll just leave this as is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ward this entire room. As you can see, I'm just doing uh, pretty much every block in here. So this will be a minute while I ward everything up, and I'll be back shortly once we're done. All right, guys, so I think... We have a pretty safe and secure room here. Uh, the wither can sometimes really cause some pretty large radius of explosions, so it's potentially possible that uh, his explosions will be able to reach outside that little room, but not much. So he should be trapped in there pretty well. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to cover up all these walls here. We'll see if we have any uh, residual damage, but as you can see here, we've got it pretty well protected all around um, and all the inside of the room as well. So uh, I did manage to get the light to work. It looks like after I warded the blocks around it, like that little clearness worked. I don't know what the deal was, but I'm not going to worry about it. So anyway, it's working. It's warded. Should we give this a try? I think we should. I think it's time. All right, so let's get out of our bag of tricks. The Wither Killer, which is this sword right here. And remember to put this guy in your hotbar to keep the sword charged. There we are, nice. So I've got power, I've got armor, I've got everything I need. Should I grab? I think I'm going to grab from my inner chest some milk, just in case things get a little hairy. Uh, I'm also going to grab some soul sand, because I'll need some of that stuff. Just grabbing a handful of it doesn't really matter. And let's come over here and grab myself. Oh, good, I've got a lot of Wither Skeleton Skulls. We can also see I'm getting a lot of bows and uh, miscellaneous things. We're going to see how rapidly this fills up. Eh, we're almost filled up one of the 4K storages. I might just make a few more 4K storages and just keep all the stuff it creates. I, I don't even know why I would want to keep it, but... But now we should have a pretty protected thing. Remember, Ethereal Glass, by the way, uh, not a tile entity, so you can protect it. Cool, right? <laughs> I love it. No way he's getting out of here. All right, you ready to give this a shot? So uh, my only recommendation is make sure to stand outside of the walls when he does spawn. Otherwise, you'll take that um, damage that he's going to generate when he explodes on his initial spawning. And here goes nothing. One, two, three. And let's get out of here. Wither, battle, engaged. Nice and protected. Let's see what kind of damage he does to the walls around him. Hopefully none. But we'll see. Oh, see? Told you. He sometimes reaches out a little bit. So that's good to know that he did get in there with that. Uh, there's just a little bit of... Um... Oh, that hurts. Alright, so he shouldn't be allowed to get out of there. So I should be safe for a minute to accidentally forgot to bring my heal spell with me. So that's important to get. There we go. Die, wither, die. Got him. Nice. Heal myself up. So that wither lasts a while. I'm just going to go ahead and drink up. Did I get another star out of that? 
Oh yeah, there it is, in the corner. Cool, look at that, nice. I'll store that nether star right down here with all my other spoils. And uh, let's see, so where did he manage to cause explosions? Um, around some of the edges here, looks like I'm gonna have to clean up this area just a little bit. Um, I don't mind so much that some of this gets destroyed. That's not a problem for me. Oh, I did lose something. I think I lost, yeah, I see what he blew up. He blew up the things, whoa, doing that. <laughs> All right, we need to uh, prevent these guys from spawning. Let me uh, get this fixed. Um, looks like we're gonna have to do something. Hello, weather skeletons. <laughs> nice, ah, weathered. All right, let me, ouch. I think I sell some milk on me. Let me fix this up and uh, repair some of the damage he did. Like I told you, sometimes he has a pretty big range on that explosion. So we just need to be careful about where he's uh, hitting stuff. I want to make sure he didn't hit these cables up here. No, he didn't. That's good. So we'll want to do a little bit more protecting and warding. Uh, I'll be back in a minute once I've completed that process. All right, back. Place these guys inside this room. It doesn't really hurt to have them there. Um, Let's try that one more time and just make sure that it doesn't cause any further damage and then we'll be good to go. One more wither battle. Now next up, for my next trick, I'm going to go ahead and set it up so that this guy is spawned automatically. That's the plan. We're gonna see how well it works out. You ready? So first off, nice. All right, so I do take a little bit of damage from his initial explosion even out here through the water blocks, but, ah, really, he managed to hit this? Not cool. All right, so I need to fix that still. I guess, I wonder if I had warded this if he wouldn't have been able to get through. What the heck is that thing right there? Oh boy, is he getting, uh, he's kinda, yeah, he's, he's breaking this stuff. Making me a little nervous there, Mr. Uh, Wither. <laughs> All right, can you break this thing now? I want to see if he can't get through here. All right, I think we're in good shape. I don't think he's able to hit this thing anymore. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more testing, obviously. I probably built this a little close to this room. Did I really need to build my weather spawner right next to this area? Probably not. I thought I had it far enough away, but maybe not. All right, uh, next trick, like I said, we're gonna be automatically spawning this guy in here. And then maybe even, oh, he's got a hat on. That's what that green thing was. I'm like, what is that green thing? Regen heal is a good way to go with this thing. Man, this guy dies fast with a sword. Taken down by Direwolf 20. Sorry, Wither. All right, back in a minute. Let's see what we can do to auto-spawn this guy, huh? That's what I get for walking away when uh, I still have the withering effect on me. <laughs> Whoops. So I decided to turn on my quarries because the next stage of this build needs some diamonds. I want to come check out where my quarry's at, and it's pretty close to that castle. So I'm really interested to see how well my whole if there's something in the way thing works. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this for a minute and I'll come back if something interesting happens or if it's just working perfectly and I get to show you guys that it worked. All right, back in a minute once it's actually reached a point where it's gonna be stuck. All right guys, looks like it's about to happen. The quarries are running and it's about to fail to move. So here goes nothing. Will it successfully clear this path in front? I'm just interested here because this is like the first, this is a real deal test. Like there's a huge thing in the front. If this thing successfully manages to, to, to take care of what it needs to do, then I'll be happy. So it looks like he's running and hopefully clearing stuff out. Oh, our Fortron energy is kind of low. This thing has been running for a while. It might've gotten a little bit low. But he should be at least clearing some of the blocks in front here, right? Oh yeah, look, there's some stuff getting destroyed. Nice. That's what I want to see, man. Things getting destroyed. Alright, looks like it's actually working properly. I think we're just a little bit low on power. So let me get that straightened out. Let's see, are you actually that low? Yeah, you are. All right, all I did was make a slight modification here so that it turns on the Tesseract at the same time it turns on this thing. So as it's trying to destroy blocks, it'll go ahead and also turn on the Tesseract. Cool. Like I said, might need a few speed upgrades or something. We'll see what happens. But it does look like it's actually doing a pretty good job of clearing this stuff out, which is pretty much what I wanted. 
Yeah, it's working. Nice. So I did decide to go grab a few speed upgrades and toss them into the two machines there, and now they definitely seem to be working a little bit better. Um, and as a result, I think now that we're just moving a little bit quicker. I'm moving and uh, I'm destroying more than one block at a time as a result of the speed upgrades. So that's definitely helping out. And uh, yeah, we're cruising now. Hey, it works. Cool. I'll come back in a little bit to make sure everything worked out properly. I just kind of wanted to show on camera that I actually, this thing worked out the way I had hoped it would. What kind of trouble am I getting into out here? Well, let me show you. How am I going to automate the creation of a block set inside of an area that nothing can get into? Typically, I would do something like a turtle or an autonomous activator or something to deploy uh, the soul sand and the wither skeleton skulls inside this area, but it's so warded up, there's no way to do it. I can't put autonomous activators in here or they'll be destroyed when the wither spawns, and I can't get a turtle in here because he can't break through the blocks and then replace them. And don't even ask about having a turtle ward up the walls. That just sounds like a dangerous thing waiting to happen. Pretty sure if a turtle decided to do the warding, we'd be in trouble. So how am I going to do this, you ask? What block can we think of that can deploy other blocks at range? I'm glad you asked. It is time for dun, 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 custom mode. That's right. We can deploy like this, okay? And then yoink. So if we take a look at that, we should have that guy set up. That should really be all we need. Uh, so let's test this out and see how well it works. So a good way to test this will be to just hook into our main power supply downstairs and see what kind of trouble we can find. So I've got a pair of force field projectors and a Fortron capacitor and a coercion driver. Coercion driver needs to go here. And uh, you can derive some power for me. Thank you, fill up. And Fortron capacitor, you can be online and start filling up your internal capacitors. And then finally, force field projector here. We're gonna put this custom mode in and activate. And what we should have, all right, cool. That's close to what I want. Let's get a translation module. There you are. Yeah, that'll work. One, two. That should be good. And, ah, darn it. How am I for diamonds? I am out of diamonds. I need to run this little thing again. Hopefully, I'll be able to. Maybe stuff will come through. Hopefully, I'll get some diamonds. I'm getting a lot of colored bricks and stuff from inside that um, area. So that's going to take a while to clear out its space. And I didn't want to run this again because my power is awfully low. But I guess we'll just have to let it be and see what happens. So did we get any more diamonds that time around? Not yet, it doesn't look like. All right, give me a few minutes here. I need to wait on diamonds. Scratch that. Don't really need to wait on diamonds. I can borrow from the setup I have outside where I'm getting prepared to do that auto base building thing. I'll just bring stuff back to it later. All right, so I'm probably gonna wanna translate this guy up twice. Does that sound about fair? Now, here's the deal. What we should notice is that um, it captured the T shape like that, but it also grabbed from underneath here, uh, this little shape. Uh, so the dirt or the grass blocks right there. So that's gonna be a little bit of a problem for us, but we shouldn't have too much of a problem at the very least. Should be able to manage around it. So let's get ourselves a wrench. Thank you, and come with me, guys. Thank you. Very good. Everybody's with me. Let's go downstairs. In the meantime, I'm going to turn this off uh, just because we really don't have the power to be running it right now. See, yeah, he drains very quickly. Unfortunately, I have to turn on the Tesseract to get power to the force field projector. And in doing so, it also drains the energy cell because the, the, the quarries all accept power and it's just a mess. I'll manage to sort something out there. Once that power recharges, I'll get that thing running again. Anyway, uh, let's do the following. So I'm going to want to deploy. So let's go into bat mode. This guy's, ah, oh, that looks cool. All right, good. So where exactly can I put stuff that it won't get destroyed? So it looks like this whole area is getting cleared out pretty darn well. But underneath, are we like in good shape here? Okay, cool. So he doesn't seem to be affecting the blocks underneath him too much, which is a good sign. So let's find the center of that room where we're going to want him to spawn. Let's say it is negative 150 by 68. Does that look like a good spot? Okay. So let's set up something out here that's going to be nice and far away. I'm also going to have to run power to this guy. Oh, here we go. I've got a power hookup right here. Uh, coercion driver, would you please start deriving some coercion? 
yeah, this thing can run on EU. Of course it can. Haha. <laughs> Alright, cool. And then um, we'll go ahead with the uh, Fortron capacitor. It can go right there. You can hook up. Cool. And then uh, negative 150, 68. This is where we're going to want to be probably having... I'm just going to put it one block lower just so we're a little safe. And then we want the custom module, and I want to figure out exactly how much scale we need into this. So I'm going to try four initially and see what we come up with. So to get out of here... All right, you are totally facing the wrong way. Well, not totally. I guess it's not the end of the world. I was kind of hoping to get him to rotate. Let's see. I think there's a rotation module, but I'm guessing that requires diamonds. Yes, it requires three focus matrixes, which I do not have. Okay. I tried placing it differently, and it still does that. All right, I'll try it. I'll, I'll see about rotating this in a bit, but for now, this will be fine. So look, see how it's going to deploy like that? So if I give this guy um, the following, let's see, do I have some stuff on me? So all I should have to do is place a chest next to it with some soul sand inside, and then, you ready for this? Field stabilizer module and go. And what we should wind up with is some soul sand getting deployed. Ha! <laughs> cool, right? <laughs> All right, so with that in place, um, then we would turn this off. So I have to determine how long that needs to stay on. Um, and we'll figure that out in a bit. But for now, at least this will work. So you're still running here or what? You don't really seem to be. I guess it's balancing out the power. All right, next up, we're going to want this guy. And I'm going to need those um, range doohickeys that I've got over there. Scale modules. Because basically what I'm going to need here then is to go in block or cube mode. We're going to go three up, left and right. Does that sound right? I mean, I could always go into this mode, so let's see. Uh, yeah, that would be west and east. Cool. So what do you look like? Not quite what I was looking for, so we need it to go up two more, and then north one. Probably just short on translation modules, but I'll demonstrate this. So we'll go up two more, and then, excuse me, I just need one of you north one and engage cool so that's going to deploy the wither skeleton skulls for me so in order for this to work what i'm basically going to need is a couple things i'm going to have um some soul sand ready to be deployed oh i got a knowledge fragment uh and i'm also going to have the wither skeleton skulls so i'll have all that stuff set up from up there ready to go down here um what we'll do is we'll get a bunch of items over to the chest and then we'll um, set up an automated timing system of some sort. Either it'll be a turtle or some redstone cabling, something along those lines. Uh, but this guy will also have a um, one of these modules in here, the field stabilizer. Okay, so this guy's ready. I need an extra scale module in this guy. I've got to get another chest, probably place him on this side of the wall. Uh, I mean, I could even set it up now if I want. doesn't really matter. I just don't want these two um, chests to interact with each other. I mean, I could go with iron chests, but if I put it here, it would turn into a double chest. Uh, this is where the weather skeleton skulls are going to pull from. Um, we don't need to specify with custom module. We'll just say field stabilize, and we'll only have wither skeleton skulls in here. That's the only thing that will stabilize. Um, so long, should we try this? Do you want to try it? Hey, why not? I mean, it's, we might as well try it, make sure it works, right? Yeah. So how about three of you? And we're going to say... So when I activate this... Uh-oh, I hear a wither. <laughs> ah, that's cool. Look at that. Yeah, we do. We got a wither. Nice. So the real key is, does he destroy stuff? Let's hope not. Uh, let's grab some milk in preparation for drinking and a healing spell. And we should kill this guy, right? So I've got my wither killer sword ready to go. Come here, wither. 
And maybe I'll even set up an automated killing mechanism to collect these nether stars too, but we'll see about that. Okay, so drinking some milk, because that's hurting me. Healed up, and some food just to take care of that. All right, nice. So this works pretty well. Um, any destruction, any problems? These guys survived, probably because I... Well, I didn't ward that block. Did I ward this one? Okay, I didn't either. All right, well, either way, blocks are living. He didn't manage to get those guys. He didn't manage to get much. Just want to make sure he didn't destroy anything downstairs here. Eh, we're good. I think overall, we're really good. He might have gotten a few things back here, but I don't really care too much about that. I just want to make sure he didn't actually destroy any of the force field stuff which it doesn't look like he did. So that's what we're gonna do, guys. We're going to build an automation system to automatically spawn the wither inside the warded room where nothing else can get in. Modular force field manages to build stuff inside. I like it. All right, guys, back in a moment. All right, guys, so with that, it looks like we've hit that unfortunate wrapping up point for the episode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this energy cell recharge, do a little bit more mining. Obviously, I need more diamonds. While this is a super fast mining operation, it is a little bit brutal on the power generation. Uh, but hey, you know what? That's the price we pay for awesome, awesome stuff. Maybe at some point I'll get even more power generation so I don't even have to worry about how much it's drawing. But for now, I mean, we're in pretty good shape. So this is Dial 20 signing off. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. We'll be back next time. Um, gonna finish up the automated wither thingy gonna set it up so that there's um always a supply of soul sand and wither skeleton skulls assuming i have soul sand in my inventory i'll have to go uh, mining in the nether and collect a bunch this guy does seem to be running pretty well we've got a good amount of stuff collected here not too upset with the progress we've made so far and we're actually collecting a lot of stuff so i'll uh, catch you guys next time all right take it easy